Now let's be clear. Favorite list, best list, greatest list can be fun avenues for facilitating dialogue. It can be fun for getting discussion and debate going. They can be fun things. And they're usually done in a way to do just that, like an intentional troll. And a lot of times when you see these greatest or best of lists, whether it comes to music, movies, TV shows, entertainment, sports, like you'll usually see a couple of things, recency bias because you're trying to push a current agenda about something current that's going to be better for the product that you're currently covering. So that's going to be baked in. You're going to have a lot of times those lists being done by one person and their narrow perspective or a group of people with similarly aligned perspectives, like da 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 da. So you have to kind of roll with the punches and understand sometimes that you'll see some interesting, compelling lists and you'll see some lists sometimes that just look like stupid idiots constructed them. And both can be true. And when it comes to WWE, you, you, you typically know how this game goes. You know the bullshit because you've seen it time after time after time. You know they're going to put out a list that seems stupid on so many levels and not in the, oh, we could just deflect away because it's all about opinion. No, it's just fucking stupid. Your list is stupid type of situation. Like the whole Shawn Michaels is the greatest superstar of all time type of hot garbage. And let's be clear again, to think that he's the greatest superstar of all time is hot garbage. He could be your favorite wrestler. You might want to make an argument for greatest in-ring performer in WWE history. But when you talk about things like superstar, that brings with it tangible, quantifiable metrics uh, such as star power, mainstream exposure, name recognition, impact and influence on the business and all of that. And you can't sit there and say a guy like him is the greatest superstar ever when the one time he was truly on the top, business was as close to crappy as it ever had been. And the two hottest eras in the company's history one, he was a tag team wrestler for a while as part of the Rockers, and the other one, he was just an on-screen authority figure off and on when he was sober enough to be able to show up. So we know with WWE, it's all about recency bias and pushing fucking current agendas. We all know it's political backstage bullshit and sometimes about you know what your relationship was with the company or this person or this team or this whatever's relationship with the company. Like, sometimes it's just people in that company playing damn games. We know how this works. So on the one hand, we shouldn't take these lists too seriously. However, there's also a place where you start to realize that more and more fans over the years start to buy into these lists and start to agree with this hot garbage and take it way too seriously. Which brings me to this list of WWE naming their 50 greatest women superstars of all time. It doesn't say your favorite, which I think some people are losing in translation. It doesn't say best wrestlers. It's a superstar. Like these should be the women that had the most impact. These should be the women that were the biggest stars. These are the most memorable women, etc. I could go on and on and on. Of course, now more and more, You've got more of the clown show stand culture that are going to sit there and focus on the in-ring shit because you certainly can't focus on the other elements that actually truly measure a superstar, but I digress. So they put out this list and, <laughs> oh God, this is so bad. <laughs> I'm not going to go through all 50 of them, but You'll imagine my absolute lack of surprise at Trish Stratus being number one. Whether I agree with that, eh. But she's at the very top of the list. And it totally makes sense why WWE would put her there. Because it's hard to deny her appeal, her impact, what she did over an extended period of time. You know, Vince loved her, and that's at the end of the day all that matters. You know, all the other women that came up, like Trish was a trailblazer and everything else, and that is all true. 
So when I see like a Trish Stratus here as number one on the list, while I don't know that I fully agree, I don't know that I fully disagree, I don't feel passionately enough to really dispute it because you can make an argument. And as long as you can make an argument, that's one thing. But then as soon as you move on from her, you also understand there's a little bit of politics there. Like we're going to put the beautiful, gorgeous Trish Stratus with all them thickums and thickness at number one on the list. Like it's whatever. But then you start talking about the bias and the recency bias and the pushing agendas and narratives bullshit. And this is where the list starts to immediately go off the rails. The number two greatest woman superstar in WWE history is Charlotte Flair. Let's overlook for a moment that I don't like that forced, overrated piece of crap. Just when you talk about greatest superstar and you talk about impact, meaning, significance, star power, name recognition, all those things that actually go into being a superstar, by no metric can you call Charlotte Flair the second greatest of all time, you stupid idiots. And of course, number three, you knew she was going to fucking follow close behind. And here comes the toxic Becky Stan culture. Here comes Becky Lynch. Number three on the list, the man. She was so much the man. When I went to the last house show I went to, you know, back in the day, I went to house shows and the arenas would be full. Here, arena was maybe 25, 30% full. But she was billed and advertised. She was on the marquee. She was in the main event. But yeah, greatest superstar, third of all time. <laughs> they got China fourth. If you want to talk about in-ring wrestling, whatever, that's fine. Like if this wrist was about 50 greatest women's wrestlers, or like in-ring performers, like maybe you want to have a different conversation. Cool. But it's not. The list is called 50 Greatest Women Superstars. And this whole thing, while it's subjective in its opinion, it's not asking again for your favorite. It's asking for greatest. And in some way, shape, or form, we should be able to quantify and define that. And no, it does not begin middle and end with a fucking in-ring action. It is about way, 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 way more than that. And the fact that the company and plenty of idiots on the interwebs and especially social media and the wrestling sites and everything else would sign off and align to and agree with this crap that both Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch are greater superstars than China absolutely makes me sick to my fucking stomach. It's shit like this that reminds me of why wrestling is what the fuck it is today. It reminds me of why wrestling is at an all-time low in terms of name and face recognition when it comes to wrestling and when it comes to the mainstream because of shit like this. The standards have dropped, the bar has lowered, and the first little glimmer of anything you get, you think that it's great. And all these toxic ass Becky stands. Here, here, here's some real truth talk. You know, going way back when, when they, if you remember when they tried to force her as a heel, I said way back when that shit doesn't work because Charlotte fucking sucks and nobody wants to boo Becky. Go with her and make her that girl. They did. And at the end of the day, when she was being pounded down everybody's throats on top, people continued, click, 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 click. You can't be the greatest superstar ever or in the top three when you can point to the audience decreasing because of your presence there. That's ignorant. And especially when you're comparing her to China. And I've done a video about this, talking about who is better. There is just no metric that you can point to that suggests Becky is a bigger star than China other than your toxic standum for Becky Lynch, period. It's not about emotion or opinion at that point. It's just reality. Like Asuka's five. I like Asuka, but top five all time, really? Sasha is six. You can fucking see that shit coming. Like I can go through and I can pick apart so many different things on this list, but it's frankly a waste of time. But then I see shit like this. And as much as the China shit bothers me, 
that you would put Becky and Charlotte ahead of her. That's stupid and ignorant. But also knowing that that has to deal with Triple H and Stephanie and the politics again. That shit matters. And then the recency bias matters because you're trying to push Becky and you're trying to push Charlotte. China's dead. She's not fucking there, so you can't put her at number one. Trish is alive, so you put her at number one, so you keep the old heads like me happy, but then you immediately put your own current ones, like, give me a fucking break here. Right? Especially when you look at WrestleMania, was it 35? That main event was nothing to write home about. Oh, yeah. Oh, second and third greatest female superstars in all time in WWE. Uh, Alondra Blaze was seven. One spot ahead of Lita. Lita got beat out on this list by Alondra Blaze. What fucking universe are you living in that you think Alondra Blaze was a greater female superstar in WWE history than Lita? Lita had years in that piece. Alondra Blaze was there at a time that they eventually did away with women's wrestling entirely. Alondra Blaze's most significant moment as a wrestler, as an on-screen performer and talent, came in fucking WCW on Nitro when she dropped the damn WWF Women's Championship into the trash can. If this doesn't scream out politics or other bullshit, I don't know what the hell does. Like, the, the China shit... I cannot agree with and also see and understand the narrative that they're trying to push. And if you can't, then I don't know, God help you. It sure as hell isn't helping professional wrestling with that mindset. But we put Alondra Blaze ahead of Lita? And Mickey James? I'm just going to go through some of the names here. It's not just that Alondra Blaze was put ahead of some of these. It's the fact that she was seventh on the list and put ahead of other ones. Such as fucking, I'll even go there, yes, Bailey, Beth Phoenix, Mickey James, Victoria, Molly Holly, Sable for Christ's sakes. Sable! You're going to tell me Alondra Blaze had a bigger impact on WWE? You're going to tell me she was a bigger superstar than fucking Sable? Are you nuts? Who does this? But really... If we want to just talk about how stupid this shit is, Stephanie McMahon, the most powerful woman in WWE, long time on screen character. You talk about star and name recognition, has him as much as any woman on this list. She absolutely does, and you know she does. Like she's as mainstream as anybody. She's 23rd on the list. They got Rhea Ripley and Natalia's fucking ass ahead of her. Are you nuts, AJ Lee? They're ahead of Stephanie McMahon? Like the very stupidity of this is astounding. You could make an argument easily that Stephanie McMahon, when you talk about greatest women superstars of all time in the company, is top five. She's top three. Like, if you want to sit there and talk about resumes and purely debate that, and you want to compare, like, a Charlotte or a Becky Lynch, uh, like, bitch, bye, it's Stephanie McMahon. She destroys them. Period. Like, you cannot argue that. I could also argue <laughs> her over Trish Stratus. Like, the point I'm getting at here is I could make an argument for Stephanie McMahon being number one, and she's fucking 23. Who the hell does this shit? And you know who's not on the fucking list? Where's Mae Young? When you talk about women superstars, greatest women superstars of all time, for even for WWE, you don't even have Mae Young on the list. I understand why Moolah maybe not on the list, but you left out Mae Young. I don't see her. I'm scrolling through this quickly, but I sure don't fucking see her. Like Christ Almighty. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody has one, and they all stink. But when you come up with a list that you should be able to actually quantify it and have things that you quantify, and it's not just the in-ring components alone, because it's certainly not, especially when you're talking about being a superstar. Becky and Charlotte being ahead of China is a joke. Alondra Blaze being ahead of Leah is a farce. 
Rhea Ripley and Natalya and AJ Lee being ahead of Stephanie McMahon, like many others ahead of Stephanie, is an abortion! These lists are stupid.